And I was like, okay. But then but it's still, I had it was, uh, still, it, it was still breaking down and you were still getting further and further behind on the payment. Exactly. Okay. Well, you know, hey, look, it's, this is all learning experience. You know, this, you know, people learn, people don't learn from their successes. You know what I'm saying? We, we all don't, a lot of people will try to tell you, yeah, you know, you learn from your successes. No, no, you, you learn more from your failures because you figure, yeah. what, you, you figure what went wrong, you know, next time, what to look for and make sure that you know that uh know what to do on the next go around you know i mean jay-z didn't become a a, a multi-billionaire overnight i mean he wasn't i mean he wasn't a super rapper overnight you know all that took time i mean his third what was that his third album was the one that kind of like got him over the, you know got him into superstardom you know what i'm saying I mean, his first album was hot too, but you know, it was that third album that just mm -hmm. you know that took off for him. So, you know, you, it, it, Rome wasn't built in a day, you know. So, you know, you take everything that you know, you take everything that that you happen, learn, and and you know, hopefully, you know, on the next go around, you'll be good. You'll you'll be good. Yes, like I I don't regret it at all i'm kind of glad i got out when i did because now that i look at fuel i'm like Oof. yeah that did i'm that fuel, uh, that fuel, i'm gonna just that, waste the company's <laughs> car yeah, that fuel ain't no joke <laughs> and i all i want <laughs> all right. so i had all i want all right so charm man uh you know life hit you a little bit i i, I checked you out on uh instagram because you know me and you we follow each other on Instagram and everything. And uh, I think we mm -hmm. follow each other on Facebook too, but uh, you was at a Cleveland clinic uh, about a couple of months ago. What was, what was going on with you? Oh, I recently had weight loss surgery. Okay. I uh, went to Mexico, which I had a great experience. Um, I want to say this complication was really geared towards my surgery. I ended up, You'd say you uh, you had complication with your surgery? Yeah, I had pancreatitis, which I never had before, and it was causing me pain. I was actually on the road with my last company, and they were trying to argue me down about getting off the road. I was like, I'm not feeling good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to find out it was that pancreatitis and, and the you, traveling blood clot, but all is well. And you said that was that that was part of the, the weight loss surgery? Whoops. What was the uh, journey well, for your it, weight loss surgery? They, they can't pinpoint it to the surgery. They just think my body went into shock because I never had major surgery. Oh, okay. So okay. they were like, you know, because cause you don't drink or you don't, you know, maybe your body is, is you know, in shock from adjusting. Okay. Um, like, like my journey, like what you... Okay, so you say you went to Mexico. So how 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 did all yeah. that come about? Like... I mean, what what you do? You you went on Google or what? What was, what was what 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 you well, do to, to 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 go through the surgery or to get out to Mexico, get the surgery and then get back home? How how was the whole experience? Uh, I'm not gonna lie. When the pandemic hit, I was one of them sisters with a stimulus. Like I should get some uh, plastic surgery. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, might as well. I'm on furlough, you know. Shoot, come back to work with a new body. I was like, why not? Might okay. as well. So, so, but, you uh, got, so you got that. Uh, <laughs> so you got that twelve. What was it? Twelve, six, and fourteen. Yep. I was like, might as well. I got you know. I always wanted to get it anyways. And then um, I joined these surgery groups on Facebook and stuff, and I saw where a lot of these women had weight loss surgery. And I was like, oh, really? And it was like, yeah. Well, you know, this was like surgery has so many like discounts and stuff. And, you know, instead of it being like 10000 and up, you know, you was getting it for three, 4000 because, you know, of course, they were trying to make that money back up. You know, they didn't want to lose for, from the pandemic. And a lot of them, some of them was like, yeah, I went to Mexico and got my surgery and I paid out of pocket and I had a good experience. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. 
I'm like, people are going to Mexico for weight loss surgery. So I get on YouTube and it's a whole bunch of, you know, people documenting their, their experience and stuff. And I'm like, cause I did try to do weight loss surgery through the U S but unfortunately with being on the road and being in, you know, I wouldn't get back on time. And if you miss so many appointments, they kick you out the program. And I was like, well, you told me I could spend three to four days getting my weight loss surgery for 5,000 or under dollars and get it out the way. I was like, wait, 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 I, I got to look into this. And there was something I was trying to do last year. Unfortunately, being an owner operator and keep switching days, I, I, you know, I gave up on it for a minute. And then, um, Shout out to my boyfriend who's been supportive and really pushed me to get it out the way. And so far, so good. It 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 is work. Like when people are like, oh, that's the easy way out. It is not. It is not an easy way out. I was about to. I was you, about you to ask that. Work. I, I was about to ask that. Like, how how do you feel about people telling you or people saying that uh, that? You know why? Why you just didn't go the traditional way of going to the gym, eating healthy, and and working out and all like that? Why? You know what? What do you say to people that that says that to you? Um, I say I would like I kind of agree with them at first. Like you know, try it first. But some people have like certain medical conditions where their body cannot keep the weight off or they maintain a lot of water weight. And, you know, eating is like, you know, like mental is a big mental disease that a lot of people cannot shake by themselves. And I thought I was going to be one of those people who was going to suffer and, oh, I can't have food or I can't have this. And it wasn't so much that it was, well, you know, I don't know if you've seen like those memes, like where people would be like, before you get your CDO and after you get your CDO, where they got Will Smith, you know, chubby now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you, you aren't conscious. A lot of people aren't conscious about like when they drive, how much calories or stuff they're t- taking in while driving. Cause you're bored. Let's keep it real. You're driving while bored. You're either talking and eating or you're driving and eating and you're not noticing. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so you 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 went in, you got it. What 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 surgery you get? Was was it the the ring surgery, the gastric surgery? What I know there's different kinds. I got of the gastric sleeve where they take like a good seventy, I think it's sixty to eighty percent of your stomach. And basically, my stomach right now can hold four ounces of food at a time. Okay, okay, okay. So. Now, have have you seen? Well, of course, I'm going to assume you've seen some uh, some progress. So you you went in at what and where are you at now? Uh, I had my surgery. Well, actually, okay. So before you have surgery, they make you go on a pre op diet. My highest weight was two eighty five. Okay, I'm two fifty. Well, when I went. When I went in for surgery, I'm five two, so you know that my BMI was way high. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I went into surgery, I was two. I didn't lose that much weight on um, pre-op. I believe I was like two seventy six. I really, you know, only went down like ten or so pounds. Now to date, the other day I weighed myself. I am two twenty nine. Okay, that's what's up. So within two months, that's now, you know. Now you know. That's, that's all. A lot, I I seen a you know I I seen a lot of trucker females uh that went that again that went the way of of weight loss surgery, and uh mm-hmm. you know I you know they before pictures and they after pictures, and some of the after pictures. Well, I know one female trucker that that I follow. She don't look no different. I don't yes, know. and this is the thing. This is why I say weight loss surgery is work too. Because if you go back to old habits and stuff, see, the surgery is a tool. It's, it's not a fix-all. And I think that's where people get it mixed up. Because if you don't change your habits and your mindset, you will not lose weight. 
at all. Like, I know people who got the surgery, you know, I personally asked them, and they're like, oh, well, I didn't, you know, they haven't changed no habits or how they're eating, and they're like, I haven't lost nothing. So basically, I think is you went through all that pain and planning and, you, wasted you know, not money. to, yeah. Man. But like I said, it's, it's a big mental thing. You have to mentally change your mindset. Now you said, I know some, like oh. with the sleep, mm-hmm. you could stretch your stomach back out and then it's like you never had the surgery. Wow. Now you said, uh, you charm, you said you had your, you know, your, your boyfriend, he, he was very supportive throughout the whole, uh, mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing. Did he go with you to Mexico when you got your surgery? He, he did. He did go with me. How how is it in Mexico? Like once you leave the states, it was and, la- nice. and, and land and land in Mexico. <laughs> what what was the culture shock there? What was the culture shock for you? I don't think it was much culture shock to be honest. Like okay, so basically what what they have you do is you get your flight into San Diego, then they have a shuttle that takes you over the border, um, across. I, I went to Tijuana. And to be honest, it wasn't a culture shock at all. Like, it was gorgeous. I love the views. My boyfriend's from Jamaica, so to him, it looked similar to Jamaica, like how Mexico looked like. So, you know, because we talked about that, and he's like, this looks like Jamaica. And I was like, yeah, it do. Okay, um, okay. So so it wasn't no, 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 uh, no, no mafioso. I mean, you had... What you call what what you call them over there? The, I forgot what it is. It's on the tip of my damn tongue. But the the drug guys, the 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 no, 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 that, that wasn't the vibe. That wasn't the vibe. Like we had a good time. Like we did have like some of the nurses. I ain't gonna lie. I had the best health care I've ever had in Mexico. A lot of nurses and stuff. They didn't speak um, English, but still, you know, I was taken really good care of, and they did take care of my boyfriend as well so i mean we had a good time we were talking about going back actually and just going to visit how how long you was there for the uh for the surgery my surgery was on 11 i think that's like a tuesday or wednesday so we i know I, I think we went on a tuesday i had surgery wednesday and then they transport us back over the border friday but we didn't leave san diego to saturday to head back to ohio so all right, all right. So Ohio, I wasn't there. Like it was a quick up. thing. All right, all right. So Charm, man, we um, uh, you 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 posted uh, a sad situation. Uh, come, I yeah. I read the article. Uh, this young lady uh unfortunately lost her life to domestic violence. Um, uh, her boyfriend. Uh, shot and killed her and he turned around and and killed himself the uh come to find out she was a driver did did you know her personally or or you just know of yes her? yes i personally knew her um i met her when i worked at greyhound she and we we just been really cool she's become a close friend to me like i literally just you know, when I was in Atlanta, I stopped by her house two weeks ago and, you know, sat and caught up with her and talked with her. You know, she just got a new place with her new boyfriend and stuff. And we were just sitting there talking. And I'm just like, I just, I would have never thought in the same month I would be waiting to hear about her funeral. Wow. I am so sorry to hear that. Uh, you say she was a truck driver. Yes. Now she as well got into uh doing box trucks and stuff on her app with her ex boyfriend actually. And you know, they their business uh situation didn't last like mine. Did you did you know her boyfriend? What, what what's your what's your I thoughts? I met him what's your once. Thoughts of him when you met him. Mm, I mean, I've I haven't really personally talked to him like that. I said like, "Hey, how are you?" type of thing. Um, he he just seemed like a laid back 
guy, to be honest. He just seemed like he don't really get into much. And, you know, he don't speak much like that. You know? And, and then it's, you know, from what she would tell me, you know how, you know, women are. We, we talk about our relationships and stuff like that to each other and vent to each other. And, you know, I just saw him as a typical guy who seemed like he didn't have much ambition, really. Just, you know, and, and she she's the type of person, she's like, she knows she can have better and will go get it and try anything. Like, she she's a true go-getter type of person, really ambitious. Now, the, the article said that they found the young lady. She went missing, and they found the young lady in the area where this young man lived at. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you say you only met him once, so you you I'm assuming y'all you met him while they was together. Did he? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm I'm sh I'm certain that they didn't show no type of animosity against each other at the time of you guys meeting, right? No, not at all. Um, I, I well. When I met him, they were living together in a in a townhome type of thing, and he didn't seem, you know, aggressive, nothing like that. He just seemed like, like I said, he seemed like a typical guy to go to work, go home, probably watch the game, type of person, you know, like that type of thing. Um, you know, they they would butt heads a little bit, but that's any relationship. That that's why I'm really shocked, but. And they haven't really been broken up. I think probably like going on a year or so. Um, but you know that they still kept in contact because there is an age gap between them, and she's been with him majority of her twenties. So you know she always had like a you know a love for him to try to look out for him and stuff like that. Still, so I you know I don't know, but. Like I said, I don't know for what she's told me is that you know she 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 was the one always in control of the household and stuff like that. He was just there basically. So, so it, it was it was it was a real shock to you to find out about it. Where where were you when you found out about it? Uh, I'm well. I'm on the road now, and her cousin reached out to me and asked me, "Have I spoke to her? Because she's been missing since Thursday. I think this was like Friday or Saturday. No, Friday. And I was like, missing, because that's not like her. Like she is a social butterfly. She can light lighten up a room. Like for her not to be in contact with anybody, I was like." I was like, maybe she just needed a, you know, in my mind, I'm in, the, I'm like, maybe she needed a break and just like, you know what, I'll just talk to everybody later. That's what I was hoping. But I was like missing. And she, like, you know, she, she has a boyfriend she lives with. And, you know, her cousin was like, yeah, he said she went to work Thursday and, you know, dropped him off at work. She went to work and then didn't come back. And she was like, yeah, the last person she was in contact with was her ex. And I was like, huh? That doesn't sound right. It just didn't sound right. Man. Well, I I'm 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 sorry for your loss of your friend. Um it's definitely sad uh situation. Uh again, like I said, I read the article. It didn't didn't say too much on it, but yeah. but yeah it's you know rest in peace to uh our sister driver so uh yeah man that's woo, that's that's it's crazy domestic I'm violence like you, you just, just don't know i mean it's just weird because i don't see any domestic violence about him but you just never know someone's mental capacity at all times which is sad because i don't think she would have went around him or anything and she felt like he could have harmed her in any way which is the, which is the scary part you know she's no like i said they've been together majority of her 20s you know she's been a majority of her not lifetime but you know of her life being around him and living with him you know and it's it's 
like like this is totally random. Like I'm still in denial that this has happened. Well, Charm, thank you very much for coming on and uh, chopping it up with me, having a conversation with me. Guys, you know, this is the best conversations that starts over here on the Lockout Man podcast show. Again, my special guest on today is Charm. And thank you, man. Thank you for the catch up, man. No problem. Always nice talking with you. Hey, my pleasure. My pleasure. You take it easy and uh, you stay safe out there. You as well. All right, we'll make we'll catch up again. Sounds good.